Welcome to another episode of Hoarders, where Mako buys shit he doesn't need because it's cheap. And, uh, well, I bought this 3DS because I was making an order from J4U. I needed, actually, as it turns out, I didn't need any more Game Boy Pockets, but I bought them anyway. I did need, however, a PSP for a video I'm making, hopefully at some point, but more details to come when I get there. Anyway, I bought this 3DS from J4U because it was $9.97 and I was already paying their exorbitant shipping fees, so I figured, what the hell, I'll just tack it on anyway. The listing shows quite a few pictures. It's really not in great condition, but other than you know, the extreme amount of cosmetic wear on it, it seemed pretty decent. The listing says the item does not work. We checked this item and just couldn't power it on. We are unable to confirm details. All right, let's take a look here. Yeah, go figure, it works just fine. Uh, no, I'm kidding, I, I have already tested this out. I don't know specifically what the issue was, uh, but I do know that the battery was dead, I did already charge it, and that the dock port connector doesn't work. It does work if you just plug it in, which is how I charged it, but yeah, I don't know. I already tested everything out. It boots games just fine, or at least it boots DS games. I haven't tried out 3DS games because this is a Japanese unit and they're region locked and I haven't installed any custom firmware or anything. Um, but everything seems to work except for the volume slider. It's just seized and if you do try and force it, it makes this horrible crunching noise. Uh, but even even the 3D works, the cameras work, touchscreen works, it's got a texture if you can hear that, but it works. So yeah, I don't know, but I'm thinking I have enough parts to fix it in this mystery box labeled 3DS parts. Um, a while back I bought a whole lot of 3DS, well, not a lot as in one auction containing several units, but a lot as in I bought a lot, like quite a few of them, and um, I don't know, I, th I think I have enough parts in here to fix anything that's wrong with this. Uh, like I said, the biggest issue is going to be that volume slider. Actually, let's find some parts before, before I make a mess on my desk. Even the shoulder buttons work. Um, the slider works, we don't need that. It does need a new D-pad. This thing is terribly chewed up. I mean, I suppose it could leave it. It does match the console, but let me see what I have first. Oh, heck. This is exactly what I needed right here. This has... I'll just put black buttons in this thing. And that'll look nice, um, because at least that'll match. The power button on my teal unit and the D-pad is horribly chewed up, and so is the slider, so this is what I need right here. Let me set that aside. And then, yeah, as you can see, there's, there's, it's like cracked and there's chunks missing from it. It does work, and same thing here. It's cracked and there's chunks missing. And then this, if you look up the picture, you can look this up on J4U's website if you want. It's KB6416. Um, so KB6416, as in Kitch Bent. Uh, but yeah, screw it. Let's, let's get this thing going. Oh yeah, I, needed, I need the actual volume slider, which I know I have in here because I have enough parts to build a not working 3DS in here. That's what I want. Okay, I might need a slider after just feeling that again. I think I need that. And this here. I'll organize that later. 
So even somehow the shoulder buttons are still in decent condition and still work fine, but all right. Okay. So take this thing apart. It's actually easy if you have the correct tool. I found this out the hard way when I started refurbishing these 3DS consoles a while ago. You do need a JIS screwdriver. Now on older Nintendo consoles, like Game Boy for that matter, uh, you can get away with using a Phillips screwdriver in the JIS screws, but these things are just tight enough and just small enough that you, you really do need a JIS screwdriver. And in this case I'm using the iFixit J00. Even the battery's not bulging. There we go. Yeah. Doesn't even need a battery. I'm so happy with that. Stay. It is absolutely disgusting and needs a clean, but it's par for the course when you spend $10 on a 3DS. Firmware, for those curious, I did check it. It's on 11.0, I believe. It's not It's not an old firmware, but it's not the most current either. And there was not a, an SD card in it. Nor was there a game. That game that was in there was my own game that I was testing it with. It's just a um, Pokemon Pearl. It's not a reproduction copy. It's an actual OEM copy. The original case was damaged, so I bought this transparent pink one, and then a reproduction label. I still have the original case, but it was not great. Oh, and I didn't think to check this before, but there is no water damage. That's always a good sign. Or at least the indicator didn't trigger, which means there shouldn't be any water damage. Did I miss any screws? I don't think I did. Let me get a spudger. And don't just lift this up, there are uh, ribbon cables that need to be disconnected. I think it's just those two, yep. Eww. Alright, so I'm definitely not putting this thing together right away. I think, actually I might need to strip this down further and uh, run it under the tap, because that's gross. Oh, that's super gross. That's probably why that doesn't work. Oh, but that's where that crunching noise is from. Alright. Oh, do we have to take the whole motherboard out just to replace that? We do. Oh, that's not a big deal. I was replacing the buttons anyway. Never mind. I don't need to bitch about that. Oh, but I do need to figure out why the dock port doesn't work. I think it's just dirty and needs a really good cleaning. So pay more attention to that when I get it apart. Water indicator's still good. I like that. things out before I lose them. Alright. 
if I recall correctly, this thing is stuck down with some double-sided tape for whatever reason. Yeah, ruin that, but I don't really care. Alright, so there are three different size screws in here. I'm trying to keep them more or less about where they go. And that actually feels pretty fine. I think it's just dirty and gross based off of all this gunk. Alright. I think I've got all the screws except for that one, but I'm pretty sure that one doesn't need to come out. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I've taken apart quite a few of these things, but not like I've committed it to memory. seen that come off before. I didn't know that could come off. I think that's just like a protective layer on that. Let me grab my tweezers. Tug on it and see if it comes out. This thing. Well, presumably it doesn't matter. Because it was working. Okay. Oh yeah, this port is stuck down. I always forget about that because once you once you open it the first time, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, I need screw it. This will work. Just gonna wedge that underneath the port, and it should slice the adhesive at least enough to get a tool under there. There we go. And because it's a 3DS, there's not one, not two, but three. Whoops. Probably should have disconnected the uh, touch screen. Oh, well, that's the part I'm replacing, so if it broke it, it wouldn't matter. Come on. There we go. But three ribbon cables down here. All right. Set this aside for a moment. So we can take a look at this charge port here. Everything looks good on this side. Uh, it looks like a couple of the solder joints are broken. Um, but. The two joints that are broken, all they do is provide stability to the port. They shouldn't, there's no electrical connection there. I'm going to go ahead and fix those because I don't want it to break, but I don't think it would be causing my issue. Obviously this port has seen better, or this cart slot has seen better days, but it does work, and I did take a look. 
the pins in there are actually fine. I can sort of see it better this way. You can see the pins. Um, yeah, I, I see no reason to mess with this. And like I said, I did test it. It does read games. So I think this thing literally just needs a cleaning and a new volume. And yeah, there's no fixing that. I don't know how that happened. It's gross though. Got a perfectly good one right here though. Swap that in. I think I'll need to pause while I clean though, because this is going to take me a while. I do notice something that looks like it might be water damage up here, but it's not near any anything really, so I don't know what it is. Oh, there were some test pads there. Well, hopefully whatever circuit those were hooked into don't matter. And hopefully I don't need the pads anymore. Okay. Iron should be heated up by now. Nice big old blob of solder on that. This big old blob of solder on that. And I'm just going to touch up the rest of the pins while I'm here. Because if the first pins broke, the other pins might be fatigued and could break on down the line. But. I think we're good now. Of course, I could have always just converted this one over to USB Type-C, but I don't know. Doesn't seem, doesn't seem worth it, not when the port itself is still fine. Gross, but fine. I think I do need to scrape off this, whatever this is, before I can get it to work, though. much easier to get at now that it's out of the case. Alright, well I'm going to pause and literally just wipe down everything. When I come back, we'll take care of the touch screen, which I'm pretty sure isn't a screen protector. I think it's just completely destroyed. And we'll take care of the buttons and everything else, but I, I need to clean this thing up. It's super gross. All right, I'll be back. All right, so I started cleaning up the bottom with uh, cotton swabs and isopropyl alcohol, but after just looking at my desk and seeing all this just particulate junk, gross everything uh, that was getting everywhere, I decided it's probably uh, it's probably within my best interest to clean it properly, and. Uh, so I went ahead and stripped it down and did it with soap and water. There's still like quite a few areas that could use a little bit more cleaning, like in the uh, uh, thingy silo, stylus silo, um, and maybe in the corners for the buttons. Go on, but that I can do with a Q-tip, and that I won't feel just disgusting about. Uh, speaking of Q-tip. I just had one in my hand, literally. Oh, there it is. All right. Now, pretty much everything in this console, as long as it doesn't run on electricity, can go in the uh, dishwasher but you'll lose the little parts and you have to take it apart because you gotta take out like all the little buttons and shit. 
Uh, so it's probably best to just do it by hand. And that's what I did. I just I just put the uh, stopper in the bottom of the sink uh, so I didn't lose anything in case I dropped anything. And then toothbrush, dish soap, warm water, went to town on all the little parts. Uh, I, I washed everything plastic and even some of the metal bits, uh, but I did remove all the um, fasteners just so that I can remove all the parts and make sure that there's no trapped water in any of these little itty bitty crevices. But otherwise, I think it cleaned up pretty nicely. It's still probably a little bit wet. Oh, I didn't even think to clean in there. But by the time I get this thing put back together, there won't be enough moisture for it to matter. Oh, I thought I had done all the cleaning, I'm sorry. I thought I just had a couple spots I needed to quickly take care of. But, yeah, I think it came out all right. It's looking significantly better, too. But now, I'm gonna bring that down here. Ooh, we just got dangerously close to crotch cam. But I went ahead and cleaned out the buttons too. There's always this little funk that's under there. But those will go back in just like that. There's a spring that goes on this post. like that to give the button its a uh, well spring and then these little rods that go in to hold the button in place and give it an axis to rotate around and forgive me if I'm working crooked I uh, my camera is mounted to my desk, so I can't just slide it back. I have to rotate it back. Okay. But if I want to swap out the shoulder buttons, now would be time. But I'm, I'm going to keep these. I like the color. The only reason I'm swapping out the, um, the, the, uh, like the face buttons is because I'd rather have the buttons match and I need to swap out the D-pad and power switch because they're uh, pretty much destroyed. Before putting this in, I need to make sure the square nuts go back in. Then this can go in. And it's one of these three brackets. I don't recall which is which. I think this one goes in the bottom here. I'll worry about that in a minute. Which would mean this one goes up here. Is it this big one? No. Maybe. And that would go right there. Oh, it is this big one. Okay. Is that where the uh, ribbon cable goes, though? Does that go under? No. It must be folded that way for a reason. So I had a system with my screws. I don't recall what that system was though. I think the long black screws go up here.
quick enough. Oh god, no it's not. That's not, that's not right at all. That the whole thing is flexed. Alright, hang on. I'm gonna come back to that one. I'm gonna think about it some more. Look on the other side for now. That one looks right. Oh shoot, but does the uh, shielding go in first? Yes, it does. At least before that screw. Let me put in another one. To hold it in place. This thing probably goes like that. Yup. But it goes under the shielding. Nice. SD card slot drawer thingy and then that which has no contact at all with that bracket okay screw doesn't go there. That's okay, it's the same screw. Alright, let's come back to this thing. And figure out why this isn't working. So obviously we don't want that to go well, I hope it didn't ruin that when I tried to run that screw through. I think this needs to go through that hole there. I think that makes way more sense. And bonus, it actually fits that way. Oops.
And there should be one more, and there is. Nice. Alright, so that's that back together. It's, uh... I've lost my water indicator sticker because I forgot to take it off before I literally ran this part underwater, but that's okay. I even got the rear, um, the battery cover cleaned. And there's this weird thing, I'm not really sure what's going on, or at least how it happened, but it's like bowed out. In the middle, I don't know what it is. Like, you can press it down, but I don't know. It's just weird. Anyway, come back to that. I did also go ahead and remove this part, the uh, volume switch, and clean it up. It was super gross, but um, I think we'll be good. I don't think I need to swap it now that I have it cleaned up. Do need to somehow get it back in here though. There we go. And then there's this little bracket that you can see, even though I cleaned it, there's still some gunk on there. There it is. Oh, I need a new cotton swab. But this is probably what was causing that crunchy noise. In fact, you know what's easier than cleaning this? Raiding my box full of parts to find another one. Oh, but there isn't another one in here. That's a bummer. Well, that would be easier if it uh, actually pan out. Shoot. Okay, well, never mind that. Unless it's in here. No, it's not. Darn. I was hoping to take a shortcut. All that shortcut did was make it take longer in the end. I suppose there's a lesson to be learned there. I don't think I'm smart enough for that, though. Okay. go back in and now look at that we have the full travel distance with no gross noise it's nice and smooth in fact all right so let's move on to the buttons I haven't peeled these membranes off yet so uh I was afraid of that oh well I'm replacing them so I don't have to worry about it too much But this is what one of the buttons I wanted to replace, just because it's so... It's literally cracked. I, I don't know how well it's coming out in camera. But you can see, like, around the edges... And the tweezers don't really catch on it. But right there... Yeah. Anyway. And especially... Ugh. This thing. You can see how the corners are all worn down. 
And last but not least, this thing here. Getting those out is always fun. This poor soul. I'm just going to throw that out. Not even worth trying to save. But I need to make sure to clean under that. I'm missing that piece on one of my white 3DS's because there's an obscene amount of light bleed. Okay, I should clean in here. And I might need to pause here for a minute because this, I have a feeling this is going to take me a while, especially down there. So I'll be back. I'm literally just going through these all and cleaning them. All right, so there is something to be said by, for just buying a DS that doesn't need all this work, um, all this cleaning, uh, but it's okay. I like doing this. Okay, so I did go ahead and clean up these buttons just on the off chance that they might still be usable, and I'll throw them in my spare parts bin, but I'm not gonna be using this. This thing is, I don't know what the hell happened, but it's its not in good shape. Uh, I did go ahead and already pull the buttons from my donor console, and they are absolutely pristine. So we will be using those. And I did spend a few, I don't know, like, 15, 20 minutes trying to clean up this thing. What button is that? A. And, uh, I don't know. I think it cleaned up pretty nicely. I might have to replace this top lens eventually. It looks... I don't know if that's going to clean up. I haven't tried cleaning it yet, but it looks pretty gross. Then again, this whole thing has looked pretty gross, and so far it's cleaned up nicely. Come on. Now, I know you can get aftermarket buttons for these things, but I'm doing this today, so. And I have tried that before. The buttons themselves are okay. They're not great. They're usable. If you have nothing else, it's better than nothing. But the button pads are pure garbage. Do not waste your time. Alright. Oh, one more thing before we move on to the screen. I forgot to pull this part. Okay. Alright, so this isn't in the greatest condition, but like the rest of the buttons, it's still perfectly serviceable. I don't remember what happened to this 3DS that ended up in my uh, spare parts bin, but I think I actually kind of want to solve it to that too. That would be neat. Oops. But nonetheless, this thing is in way better condition than this one, so we'll use this. Interesting with the bottoms. You know, this one's white plastic from a black. 3DS and this one's black plastic from the blue. Well, actually, I don't know if this is from a black 3DS. I don't remember. I mean, obviously, it was just in a black 3DS, but I don't know if it's original to that 3DS is what I'm saying. Okay. And then I'm pretty sure the white pad goes first, and then that's not the right one than this one. I don't think it really makes that big of a difference, though. You know, I'm going to set these aside for now, because I'm just going to lose them. 
while I'm flipping this thing over. All right, set this aside. Move on to the screen. I have no idea if, if this screen works. Instead of transferring over the touch screen, it's probably easier to just try it first. Interesting looking at the markings on these. Anyway, let's try it. Instead of just trying to transfer over the panel, it'll be easier to replace the whole LCD. All right, I did try cleaning this up. I got most of the corrosion, I think, off. I ended up saturating a cotton swab with some vinegar, rubbing it on there, and then I took a brass wire brush and uh, that got rid of pretty much everything. I also tried uh, tinning this thing with some solder and the shiny part still takes solder but the dull part doesn't, so I don't know. I was just, I was hoping to try and protect the finish. Oh wait, I gotta do this first. But I don't know, I'm not too worried about it. Worst case scenario, the cart reader on this thing stops working and oh no, I'll just have to run games off of the SD card. I mean, to be honest, I'm already not planning on using the cart reader since it's a Japanese model and I have no Japanese carts yet. I hate these things. Specifically, I hate this one. This is the worst one. I don't think it's plugged in all the way. Come on. There we go. Now it looks plugged in all the way. Okay. Flips down like that. And surprisingly, everything is in place except for touchscreen. Usually, it's have to work much more to get everything in place. Okay. So I'm gonna start putting some screws in before I even bother with the ribbons. about that. Okay. This is going entirely too smoothly. Something must be wrong. There we go. Don't worry about that. That's supposed to make that snapping noise. I hope. Yeah, it's probably fine. I'm not going to worry about it. Put 
in that screw and that screw all the buttons are in place that white bezel does not look good but we'll fix that later if the screen works or more likely not because that's easier and this is a ten dollar 3ds I should have um, labeled my parts. I think I was banking on just remembering what does and does not work when I originally made that parts drawer or parts box. But uh, clearly I overestimated my ability. I know the touch panel itself works because these things never go bad. That's why uh, Nintendo chose the uh, resistive touch screens instead of the capacitive ones. Capacitive touch screens are like the, um, the touch screens on your smartphone. You just use the finger and they have the multi-touch. Whereas these ones, resistive, you have to use the uh, stylus and it, you know, physically presses down. I don't know why I'm talking about that, but the more you know. The annoying things with these is that you have to put them practically all the way back together just to test it. Actually, that's probably not true. I know it'll work with it, or I think it works without the SD card reader. Just obviously, you can't test SD cards. I know it works without this thing. Um, but it does not work properly without the joystick. At least you can't really test anything other than boot. Oh nice, that screw hole stripped out. I blame whoever was in this before me. Alright, I lost a part. It was under my solder. 
for some reason. The lefty, I don't know why I subject myself to the torture of trying to use the tweezers with my right hand. No wonder these things break so commonly. They're such a pain in the butt. All right, I learned my lesson during the pocket video. I'm not gonna put the screws in because otherwise it won't work. And what do you think? Is it gonna work? Blue light, got the 3D light, hey, I don't think I have volume control. Try again. I said, let's try again. Well, it did work. If you scroll back to the beginning of the video, there it goes. I mean, clearly I have volume. That much is evident. I just don't think I have volume control. Well, my um, analog stick works. B works. A works. X works. Y works, D-pad works, I don't think these two buttons do anything in this game. I have to go back to the menu. And yeah, I have no volume control. Interesting. So now I gotta make sure that the uh, actual plastic piece is on the catch. It feels like it is. I also have no idea if that potentiometer I put in there is good. I assume it is. But I don't actually know. I have L and I have R. I bet the cameras work too. Let's find out. I'm just happy the touch screen works. That's all I wanted. <laughs> Go on. Back screen works. 
in 3D. Touch screen obviously is working enough. Front camera works. Yeah, touchscreen works fine. All right. So that was clearly in there. Shoot, I don't know what else to try. Oh, I should test and see if the uh, dock works. I'll do that off camera though because it's not that I can't move the dock, but I can't move the cord it's plugged into. Oh, maybe it wasn't. Oh, hang on. Let's try one more time. I'm going to put a couple screws in. I don't think it's my game. I think this thing just needs, maybe needs a cleaning. Oh, no, it's still not working because the volume's all the way down. I think it might be the pot. I don't know if the Game Boy I took that potentiometer out of works, or Game Boy, excuse me, DS. I don't know what was wrong with the DS. So, for now, I'm just going to assume it's the volume potentiometer itself, and uh, I'll have to wait till I get a new one. Uh, but for now, I think that's it. Oh, let me test. Let me test the dock real quick. Helps if we have the bottom on, huh? Yep, it's working fine. So I think that was the issue. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and actually clean up, uh, clean up the outside. I'll order a new potentiometer. And, um, oh, we, I said I was gonna do this, didn't I? Let's see if we can without destroying everything. Probably gonna have to take it all the way apart again. I'm definitely concerned with pulling this off of the touch screen. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to have to take it apart. I just realized there's a uh, lip on here that goes under the shell. Maybe I'll just save this for next time then. And there definitely was not a screen protector on this. That'll go right there, and we'll just pretend for now. No, I'm kidding. But I, I think I'm going to end the video here, because at this point, it's just me tinkering with the thing and cleaning it. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, that's my... Ooh, shouldn't have closed that. 
But otherwise, yeah, that's my $10 3DS. It's gonna cost me like, geez, it's already 6 p.m. So it only cost me like three, four hours of my time and like 20 bucks in parts, probably closer to 30, I suppose, when you count the whole screen that I've swapped out, but I didn't need a screen, it was just easier and I had one, so there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Just one more quick thing before I go. Um, I was trying to clean the cart slot with a cotton swab, but it wasn't going too well for me, so I took my microfiber cloth stuck the flat end of my spudger in it and I'm just ramming that in there and I did actually that's probably not a good idea because I just mashed up one of the pins but I'm gonna keep doing it because at this point I have nothing to lose and then take just my spudger and eh, it looks funny but it's all in the right spot so I think it's good the pin I'm talking about in specific is that one right where the tip of my spudger is you can see it's reflecting light a little bit differently. So, that's probably not a good idea what I was just showing, but maybe it'll result in better reads of my cartridge here. Let's try it out. Hey, it recognizes my game. Okay, I'm not getting a hundred percent reads though. But that was the behavior I was having before. So this thing probably needs a new cart slot. Oops, and I accidentally just shifted the battery. So yeah, not much I can do about the cart slot, I think. I tried cleaning it, but that doesn't seem to be it. Oh, maybe it's... I never checked that, but maybe one of the pins is broken free. I could absolutely resolder that. Screw it, let's try it out. Why not, right? What's the worst that could possibly happen? I think I can get in at this angle. I mean, clearly this thing has had uh, issues with solder joints breaking free before. Just got a big blob of solder. And this is absolutely something I should use flux for, but I'm just terrified of it get, of it falling down and leaking into the screen. But screw it. YOLO or something like that. I should be using my other soldering iron for this. Oh, I just dripped the flux on my wireless card and it's screwing up all the text. Yeah, 
Ah, screw it. Let's get my other iron. That'll be easier. It's got a much bigger tip on it. Because I'm having heat transfer issues right now. That's much better, but let's try it one more time with flux. There we go, that was much easier. Except for this last bridge I'm dealing with. And if this doesn't fix it, I think I would need to throw another cart slot at the issue. And that's not something I'm even in a position to do right now. Since I have no hot air station yet. I swear this cart reads perfectly fine on all my other games, game or DS's. Hey, you read that time. Read that time. But it didn't actually eject this time. There it goes. Yeah, now it's getting stuck in the slot, but. I'm actually going to blame the aftermarket housing on that. That's not... Yeah, it seems to be reading every time now. I don't know why that little icon's go not going away when I have the cart out. There it goes. Maybe that's just a quirk with this version of the software or something. I don't know. Oh, it didn't read that time. There it goes. It's much better than it was, so I think that might have been really... Oh, I just had to start saying something, didn't I? Hmm. Yeah, no, it's not reading. I bet I fucked something up when I shoved my, uh... Spudger in there. <gasps> oh, I know what happened. Son of a diddly. There's a chunk missing in my cart now. Ugh. How in the hell am I going to get that out?
Oh, that is such a disappointment. The one time I need the straight angled tweezers, I don't have them. Or the straight tweezers or non-angled tweezers, take your pick, but I don't think straight angled is the word I was looking for. Screw it, let me try another spudger. There we go. And yeah, that thing totally mauled that last pin when it broke. So if it didn't before, it definitely needs a new cart slot now. That is a bummer and a half. And I do actually have a cart slot that I can use as a donor. I have a water damaged 3DS. What the hell? Can I just bend it back into place? Ugh. I bet that was the issue. I bet I fixed it and then my cart broke and I made everything worse. Because look at that. The whole thing is broken. Ugh. I have another case, it's just not pink. And I want and I like the pink. That's alright, well I'm gonna go sulk in my corner. Actually, that's not true. I'm gonna try a flash cart and see if that actually Alright, that feels good. It might be good now. I think I got that pin bent back into place. I can't test with this flash cart though. Because the 3DS isn't gonna read this anyway. Ugh. That actually makes installing custom firmware a lot more frustrating. Shoot. Alright, well, until next time I guess. Thanks for watching.